Hello community. In my last video, we looked at the inference aware supervised fine tuning. And today we have a look at the reinforcement learning where we implement now a new reinforcement learning algorithm for an optimization of the inference phase. So let's start. You remember we said, hey, during inference, the learned policy here of our LLM Pi is often not directly used in the test time compute, but rather some different inference strategy, and we call this strategy I, is applied to the test time compute. And I could be, and we had a look at this in the last example here, a best of n strategy, which simply samples here multiple candidate responses and selects the best one using here a score function from some verifier. But also, I might be a new search mechanism or a self-correction mechanism or whatever. And the beauty of this Google Insight is now we have a look for an abstract function I and we will have a definite examples here for a best of n strategy. So this means we had to account for this new inference strategy. So after the fine tuning, after the supervised fine tuning, and we choose now an inference strategy. And if this inference strategy I, we alter now the objective function of the supervised fine tuning and the reinforcement learning objective, because we have to have a coherent inference strategy that is already embedded in the supervised fine tuning and the reinforced learning. And last video, we had this expression here for the inference aware supervised fine tuning. And today we look at this example here, the inference aware reinforcement learning methodology. This means here for a fixed base policy pi and any prompt x, there's an optimal temperature t and an optimal number of samples n, which maximize here the performance of b of n, the best of n. Now, this B of N, a very problem formulation for the inference B of N strategy is rather straightforward. No? Samples N responses from a LLM with some temperature T and then selects the best one based on some verifier score R. Now, as we have seen, the inference policy for the particular inference policy of best of N can be rewritten in this beautiful form here see my last video, and note that the verifier score R and the true reward here for the reinforcement learning R can be related, or they can even be equal, yet at this moment in time we don't make any assumption here. Normally R is a model trained to predict the real reward and therefore serves only as a proxy for the true reward of the environment to the agent. So therefore, this means we see that the above strategy defines a class of best of n policy that is different from the purely learned policy pi in our uh, LLM training, demonstrating, as I showed you in my last video, the gap between the training procedures and the inference procedures. And this is not good because we lose performance if we have a non-coherence training and inference policy. Therefore, we inject now this class of best of n policies into the inference error supervised fine tuning. We have done this last video, and today we see this at the inference error reinforcement learning framework to derive here an instantiation of the inference error fine tuning. Last time, this was the video, we ended more or less with this formula, and we had insight that with some mathematical optimization, we can circumvent the non-differentiability of the best of n distribution, allowing here for a classical solution via the standard gradient ascent algorithms. Great. Remember, in our last supervised fine-tuning inference ever new code, we use expert data, but in the methodology, there was never an explicit reward learning. It relies on a verifier to select the best output and only trains with positive examples. So we are missing out on something. And yeah, this is the lemma I've not shown you last time, but if you want here in the official publication by Google, I've given you the link already last time, you have here the mathematical proof that we are allowed to do this simplification.
But now let's start the video. Here we go. Now we focus here on the inference error fine tuning using here reinforcement learning. So we have now to recode our reinforcement learning uh, code segments. We have to have a deep dive how we can optimize reinforcement learning if we want O3 models here or QWQ where we see the logical causal reasoning happening in real time. So therefore we have to modify our reinforcement learning methodology. If you're new, the reinforcing learning paradigm is simple. It trains an agent, let's say a large language model, that optimizes its specific action, think about a robotic action, within a specific environment. So the LLM generates here n responses. Those are candidate actions for any given prompt. A separate agent, let's call this agent a verifier, selects here the candidate deemed most suitable according to predefined criterion, let's say probability of a success for a particular action in a particular environment. And this action is then deployed to the environment, yielding here a specific environmental reward, let's say task completion 85%, 100%. So, you know, this is the very simple definition if you want a simplified visualization, here we go. So here we have our pi, our policy here that is now optimized here for the best of n. We have the classical policy pi, and now the generate multiple solutions, and we have a verifier gives us here now an environmental reward, and we update here our policies. The best of n policy optimizes here the environmental reward of the best of n samples. This problem, if you look at it, takes now here a very specific mathematical form that also includes here our reward function. Now, let's have a look at this. The key challenge that we see now in training now this agent lies in achieving two objectives at the same time. We want to enhance the agent exploration capabilities. So we want that this generates quite diverse candidates that cover quite a lot of the space of the potential solution. So if you think of a mathematical space as a solution space, we want that our agent really explores all the corners of the space and align here with the verifier's preferences. But at the same time, we want to maximize here the environment reward of the final response. Google has shown us in its publication here, Lama 2, and I was asked by my viewer to stick here really with the notation of the original publication by Google so they can read it in parallel. Here we go. So here, this is Lama 2. This is here the best of an inference policy that we choose for the inference run. And we optimize now the reinforcement learning algorithm in the training of our LLM. And the gradient of the equation here is simply then given here by this form where we have here a new baseline for the variance reduction. So there's a little bit of science to it. If you're interested, you can read it. If not, simply accept this is here an equation and we call this model the best, the best of N reinforcement learning with a verifier. That's it. If you want, then have here <laughs> the gradient estimator to this particular objective, just tell you here, yeah, in the official Google documentation, you have here the mathematical proof that you are allowed to do the simplification. And if you even make it easier, if you go say, hey, I want my reinforcement learning with a binary reward and a verifier. So we have a further simplification with a binary reward known to the verifier, and this is simply here between zero and one. The theorem implies here the closed form solution here of this particular case. And then, yeah, there's a lemma that gives us here the gradient of this equation, and beautiful. So this not only reveals an efficient policy gradient estimator for this binary reward case, this special case, but more important, demonstrate how this balances positive and negative example in its gradient updates. However, you can also choose to only go with positive samples, so you don't have a weighting, a re-weighting of positive to negative samples here. 
and you give here in this particular case the positive samples here more influence over the negative example there's a methodology by google that goes only with the positive so you weigh only here on the positive weights and then the formula becomes even more simplified if you want here the overall view here look this is all that we have the best of n inference policy so the simplest inference policy we can choose here we have the supervised fine-tuning. We had a look at this in my last video. And today we look at these four cases here. Remember here, the positive only value here. And you see what model uses here a reward function. And you see all those reinforcement learning use here a particular reward function. The first one uses here a verifier that is different. Or if you go with a binary verifier, you go only with the positive forms, or if you can achieve then a closed form, those are all the different permutation here of the model. And there was also one question that was really interesting for Google. And they say, hey, do we have a co-scaling relationship between the number of the samples of our inference policy and a particular temperature of our LLM, thereby enabling us to have a joint optimization process of both parameters? And this is what they found. Google tells us we found that the lower temperatures generally yield better accuracy. Okay. And at very low temperatures here, the best of N accuracy improves here with N, indicating that the algorithm remains in the exploitation phase. So it's not exploring, but it is just exploiting known solution in the solution space, which is not really what we want. And to tell us here the optimal performance of this inference strategy is if you work with moderate and values striking here the balance between as always an exploration and an exploitation phase great if you want to see here for one benchmark for the mathematical benchmark here their accuracy you see here in blue the base model and then you have all the different models that we just talked about and their performance depending here on the number n and here we have simply an accuracy 70 percent and google tells us here quotation mark these finding underscore the potential of this new inference error fine-tuning so this supervised fine-tuning and the reinforcement learning to unlock previously undiscovered capabilities in our large language model through this new idea of aligning here our training methodologies, supervised fine-tuning and reinforcement learning, with the new inference test time compute strategies. Google tells us now particular that their future work includes now extending this framework to incorporate now more complex inference algorithm now going to reasoning because remember up until now we were very general we were just looking at different policy implementation in the inference they say we will go now to reasoning critique and revise monte carlo tree search algorithm and higher generalization and if you think about this so Given my last video where I looked at the supervised fine-tuning, now in this video we looked at the reinforcement learning, Google focuses here more or less on the general mathematics, how to optimize the processes independent of the particular inference policy. In this video where we talked about O3 and the safety implementation via DA, I showed you that OpenAI here already implemented a particular reasoning strategy as their inference policy because they know they wanted to go here in the test time compute with a chain of sort, multiple chain of sort. They already optimized their supervised fine-tuning for this inference policy of chain of sort and already their reinforcement learning inference policy chain of sort. So you see it comes now, it closes here. All the companies are doing more or less the same at different levels of detail. I think OpenAI went straight for one particular methodology, chain of thought. Google here, much more mathematical rich, much more general, analyzing here general dependencies in the different implementation of the policies of reinforcement learning, of their reward function, of their 
verifiers core. Hopefully it will converge to the real environmental reward. And you see Google with their work here focuses extremely here on a general mathematical solution that are not trivial at all. If you have a look at the original paper here by Google, you see there are a lot of assumptions happening behind the scenes so that we come to a solution that we can compute. Otherwise, we would be lost here in our computation. So there's a lot of knowledge and a lot of mathematics, a lot of insight also in the historic development, because some of those formulas that you see here, especially in the reinforcement learning implementation, they go back from their basic idea to 1993. They come from a different area, but they were also kind of fighting to come up with mathematical solutions that are applicable here to our test time compute order or inference learning, inference causal reasoning. So absolutely fascinating what is happening right now. We throw out our classical supervised fine-tuning code and our classical reinforcement learning and we optimize now because we know we want to deploy this LLM and have some inference, to some test time compute optimization in the reasoning of the model. So therefore, we already built new models with new supervised fine-tuning policies and optimized inference, adapted inference aware policies for the reinforcement learning. I hope you enjoyed this video. I learned quite a lot by looking here at the original publication by Google. If you subscribe, I will see you in my next video.